Coach, as the 2019 regular season starts speeding toward a conclusion, not too many games remain to be played here in Oakland, California. The pregame festivities here in Oakland have to be seen to be believed. This crowd in silver and black, they are fired up as their Raiders get set to face off with the Los Angeles Chargers. He's not going to get me. They run it with a rookie from Alabama, Josh Jacobs. And he takes us beyond the 35 before going out of bounds. That one good for 13 and a Raider first down. Jacobs was really good week nine in the win over Detroit. 28 carries, 120 yards, two scores as well. And the Raiders are eight games into their season, but Jacobs has actually already broken Marcus Allen's franchise rookie rushing record. He's at 740 for the year. And that puts him on pace for nearly 1,500 yards. And that play went nowhere. Losing yardage. It'll be back at the 36. One thing we do know, He's going to get his catches. So as they move forward defensively, got to continue to focus on not giving up the big play when he does catch the ball in the secondary. Come on, baby. Let's see what you got. No, no, no. On second and 12, Carr catches made by Hunter Renfro. And he'll be out of bounds up near the 45 at the 44. What I love about watching the passing game nowadays is that the one-dimensional receiver is really starting to leave the game. You've got to be able to do it all. Of course, you've got to run fast. Of course, you've got to catch the ball. But route running savvy and toughness is a premium for all of that now. Carr going to try and throw on third down. Got a man. It's complete. Williams. And he goes out of bounds. It looks like right at the 50. It's a pickup of six and good enough to move the chains. Like Antonio Brown, Tyrell Williams came to the Raiders in March, came up the coast from L.A. where he caught 41 balls last year with the Chargers. His best year was 2016 when the Chargers were still in San Diego. Over 1,000 yards, seven touchdowns, and the Raiders really have high hopes for this 27-year-old receiver. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. That one will go as a gain of 11. Raiders having a first down as well. How about the start throwing the football? Four for four on this opening drive. Oh, he's slinging it. And oftentimes when you talk about slinging it, you're thinking about a guy throwing it all over the yard, not necessarily accurately. In this case, though, he's honing in on his targets, and he's delivering. Yeah, the opening script, however, they drew it up for this first drive, going to plan so far. Carr going to get this to Jacobs. Give him eight on the play, and that'll make this a second down. I have no crystal ball up here. I can't truly see into the future. But if they don't start getting some pressure on him, make him move around a little bit and do something with the receivers to you know, change up their timing, they're just going to get shredded as we've seen so far. Right now, they're off to a blazing start. Yeah, and you are right. He looks way too comfortable back there in the pocket. Yeah, there shouldn't be a pillow back there for him, all right? <laughs> if, as, as a defensive guy, they've got to dump him on his backside a few times, shake things up. Yeah, they're going to need an in-drive adjustment here on this first series. On first down, Carr. That's complete to Richard, the running back. And he's taken down after a gain of three as they move it from the 22 to the 19. And so far, a very nice, methodical opening drive. This has the feel of a scripted drive that they rehearsed perfectly all week long, and now they're executing it on game day. Script looks good so far. That first down completion only netted him three. Second and seven. Now Carr. And he brings this one back. It's a pick six and a Charger TD. That was an interception, but on the field, the guys who are picking it off, they're not saying that. What word are they using? It's Oski. And that means catch the ball and go the other way. That's your vernacular. I've never heard anybody say Oski. Ask around. They'll tell you. Extra point by Badgley, up and good. And that makes the score 7-0.
So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. This is taken about seven yards deep. And no run back here. This will Let's be go. a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Raiders here are going to get the football back. Charles, they are 4-4 four and four as we have nine weeks now in the books of the NFL season. And at 4-4, four and four, maybe you call them, what do you say, lurking in the AFC West right now? Just a little bit on the outside looking in. Yeah, keep hoping for Kansas City to have some slip-ups in there. And for a while, people were wondering, hey, with Patrick Mahomes out, can you make that kind of a move? It's still a possibility. We'll see how it plays out. But remember, this team beating Detroit at home, they haven't had a home game in Oakland since week two. Because remember, they did have a home game in London against Chicago. Now they get two more at home. The Chargers, who got a big win against Green Bay, but have struggled most of the year. And then Cincinnati, who is 0-4 right now as we talk about this, before they go and take on the Jets on the road. On second down now, it's Jacobs. Joey Bosa in on the stop. Partner, we know today's NFL is really built around the guy throwing the football. But these short runs, they still pay dividends because they can take their toll on a defense and they can add up as the game goes along. You control the clock, you control the ball, and that way you often control the game. Let them know, let them know. From the gun now on third down, Carr. He's got a man open. It's Hunter Renfro. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. They get nine out of that one, and as a result, the drive continues. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Here's Jacobs on first and 10. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. 24th pick in the spring by Oakland was Josh Jacobs. Only rushed for 640 yards last year at Alabama, but when you consider the offensive depth chart they had, it makes it understandable. So young, won't turn 22 until February, and they're really hoping that the veteran presence of 30-year-old Doug Martin can be a guiding light for Jacobs. On second down. It's Jacobs, and he'll get it out to midfield. Looks like, yeah, they'll spot it right at midfield at the 50. Two yards, good enough for a first. I know what you're thinking out there. I know a lot of you are thinking, take a shot downfield. It's a great spot for it. I'd say maybe later in the game, definitely in the second half. But right now, I think they were just trying to get some momentum built. Get a first down, pick it up, and keep moving. From midfield, here's Carr. Drops this off to Richard. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. They'll give him eight on the play, and that'll make it second down. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. On second down, Jacobs. And they'll be inside the 35 now at the 34-yard line. That one, a first down pickup of eight. After one, seven nothing on EA Sports. Second quarter from Oakland, the homestanding Raiders with the football here as they've got it with a first and ten. On first down, they go with Jacobs again. And all the way inside the 15 before they drop it. Let's go, let's go, That's good let's go. for 21 yards and a first down. I hope we give enough respect to the big guys up front because they have been getting it done on this drive. The holes have been large, and they've been barreling through them, picking up first downs. Into the red zone, it's Carr. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. Well, nearly another interception there. That would have been two drives in a row with a pick. He's got to start taking care of the ball way better than what we're seeing. Interestingly, that throw was probably worse than the one he threw the interception on last drive, but fell incomplete. Now Carr, after the incomplete pass, brings him up second and ten. To throw again. 
car toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Darren Waller, the intended receiver, and it's third down. This drive, which was going so smoothly, all of a sudden it's a little bit of a roadblock here with two straight incompletions. Yeah, apparently this defense has had enough. Apparently they're saying no more. We're speaking a stand right here, right now. But it is third and ten. They've got to get after him one more time. Throwing his car on third down. That's complete to his tight end, Waller. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Raider touchdown. From 13 yards out as they are now on the board here in the first half. Good bounce back drive right there through the pick on drive number one. Drive number two leads them right down the field into the end zone. Agree totally. Excellent bounce back. Tremendous poise. Confidence never lost. And obviously he transmitted that to his teammates as well. What a really nice drive. Extra point by Carlson. Up and good. And we are tied at seven. So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. This fielded at the two. And he'll make it across the 20 as his guys will set up go. shop at the 23-yard line. Go. Chargers coming back out here offensively, and this is a, a Charger crew that really a lot of people had left for dead a few short weeks ago. And now you look after week nine, all of a sudden they're four and five and two straight wins after being two and five. So with the win over Green Bay, very convincing 26 to 11 victory. Do we need to revisit our expectations for the Chargers? Well, this is the normal Chargers push, isn't it? At some point during the season, it feels like the Chargers get hot. Sometimes it culminates in a playoff appearance as it did last year. Sometimes they fall just a bit short, but it doesn't surprise me at all. They usually get off to rocky starts and they finish so strong. And frankly, two straight wins over Chicago and Green Bay should be three straight wins because of that, uh, that fumble at the goal line against Tennessee. They should be on a heck of a run right now. They got a short week, Oakland Thursday night, then they go to Mexico City to take on the Chiefs. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. He was looking for Mike Williams that time. And now it's third down. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. So after the second down incompletion, they'll come up now against a third and six. From the gun, Rivers. He's got his man. It's Williams. A big play there for L.A. 43 yards. I know we love our jobs, and pretty much any play we see, we're pretty, you know, excited about. But big plays, let's face it, that's what we absolutely live for. How about that one? That was great. And what our camera missed was the fist pump from the sideline after that catch. They're fired out. That's a big game. And he'll get nothing out of that one. No gain on the dump off. It's second down. Well, that was a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained. So they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He could make a man or two miss, but that window closed quickly. Check, 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 check. Slam, slam, slam. On second down, Eckler. The second down play, not much better than the first. Just a gain of one there. Early down stuff to put this go, offense in a precarious go, position. We know the securing the point of attack, especially against the big body guys in the middle of this D, has got to be priority one. Right. And the Raiders back call three. on a nickel set here for third down. From the shotgun, it's Rivers. And he couldn't hang on. Almost an interception there defensively. Instead, it brings up fourth. I know ultimately that feels like a good defensive play,
but I know it's really not. They had a chance to keep points off the board. Now they have a chance to kick a field goal by missing that shot. Yeah, especially at this spot in the field. He's got to be upset he couldn't come up with that INT. That is inches from the upright. It's no good. Wide to the left, and this game will remain tied here in quarter number two. Everything looked good. Good snap, good hold. Sometimes, though, the ball just doesn't want to go where you want it. And this one winds up no good. Now a chance to take advantage of that missed field goal. First and 10, way up at the 37. On the ground, it's Jacobs to start the drive. And this winds up a pickup of two, maybe two and a half to about the 39. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. Hey, come on out here. Come get some. Come get some. Come on here. Come get some. From the 39, Carr. Rush coming, and he's taken down. The former number you three pick, me? Joey you Bosa, bringing the lumber they that time. Sometimes I watch games and wonder why they use play fakes on certain passing situations because it's not going to fool anyone. I don't know if that was the case here, but the end result was the same. No one fooled. The quarterback was hit. Carr and the Raiders following the sack, looking up at a third and long. Working from the gun, it's Carr. And the pressure will get to him. He goes down. Now, there is a flag on the play, but this looks like holding on the offense. On fourth down, A.J. Cole comes on to punt. Deep for the Chargers, Desmond King. And this will pin him nicely inside the 20 as it's out of bounds at about the 14-yard line. And the Chargers coming out of the field now. And they've got to be a little bit frustrated about that last drive. Missed field goal. Always hurts a team because, you know, you've put something out there. You've given yourself a chance. You're in range, and the ball doesn't go through the post. But it's not something to panic about, I don't believe. Just keep playing and keep going. Here's the backup now, the former Badger, Melvin Gordon. And he works it across the 25 before being tackled. That one good for 13 and a Charger first. We got this. now to throw on first down and this is caught first catch for Keenan Allen and he'll be out of bounds across the 30 yard line second and five after the five yard completion on first down here's Rivers and that'll be incomplete. Good protection that time, and they couldn't hook up on the long one. Now it's third down. Right up to that point, I was about to say, he's had a pretty good half catch in the football, but let's just be honest about it. He should have caught that one. And he knows that. That was one right in his bread basket and one he normally catches. They come up now, third and five, following the incomplete pass. Working out of the gun, Rivers. That's incomplete, but there is a flag down. So hang on, a big call coming on third down. Some boos coming down right now from this home crowd after that call. Yeah, and that was because of the pass interference call. But for a second there, I thought maybe they'd gotten a look at my uh, appearance as Othello in the high school play. <laughs> you, you were Othello? Not a good one, let me tell you. Come on, come on. 89. Rivers on first down. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. 
stepping aside from this game for a second, how about us being in week 10 of the NFL season right now? That makes me want to resurface that MVP talk we had earlier in the year. Who do you have right now leading Michael, in the MVP race? Is this quarterback's edition only, or can we actually bring other people no, no, into we, it? Yeah, go wherever. Because the <laughs> league does it. tell you that MVP can be anyone, but numbers show us it's really got to be a quarterback. So let's just start there, right? Russell Reflect Wilson in Seattle. I, I think he has to be a prime guy. I think you have to look at Tom Brady, all right? It's always Tom Brady. Patrick Mahomes, if he can get back into the lineup and be his usual self, he could get into this race again and maybe defend his crown. And Aaron Rodgers from Green Bay has really come on in recent weeks despite a stumble against the Chargers this past week. But how about Lamar Jackson? I mean, what he's doing with Baltimore and their win over New England, you've got to have him as a prime candidate. And you know how much I love Christian McCaffrey. Yeah, he's a special one, isn't he? Oh, he is absolutely special because he does it all. And if they weren't risking injury, he'd run back kicks, too. The Chargers going to signal for the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. and 10 rivers allen's got it complete and on this one he'll get to the 15 right at the 15 yard line now the chargers will use the second of their timeouts as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. Again, it's Rivers. And his throw is incomplete. It's been my observation. There's been a nice variety of play calling defensively. You and I often talk about an offense's ability to keep a defense off balance with what they're doing. I think the converse has been true in this game. Yeah, I think you're right. They seem to have gone off tendency quite a bit, but only the second quarter, a lot of time to change things. They tried to throw on second down, unsuccessful. Now it's third and one. He'll get this to Eckler. And he's got the first down as he gets it to the eight. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. And that one was a lot of fun right there because that was the game within the game. Third and short, blitz was on. What's the key for the quarterback? Get out of your hands in a hurry. And that was a quick little completion. Got the job done for a first down. To the air again here, Rivers. He'll get this one complete to Davis. And he'll be brought down here at the three-yard line. That'll bring up second and goal after the gain of five. Chargers going to use their third and final timeout as they stop it with 16 seconds to go in half number one. They'll go again from the three here on second and goal. They'll throw again. Rivers. And oh, it'll be intercepted. Good positioning, and it's picked off. And his guys have got it back at the closing stages of the first half. Just 11 seconds to go in the half as they have it first and 10. And they'll indeed start on the ground to run that clock. And defensively, they're just looking to keep him contained as they're able to get him down. It's a gain of six, and that will be the final play of this first half. So a touchdown apiece. That's what we have to show at halftime as they head to the locker room. 7-7, seven, seven our score. As we'll send you eastward to Orlando. Standing by with that EA Sports halftime report now is Jonathan Coachman. Take it away, Coach. And he'll take this across the 25. A couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. Out comes the Chargers as they'll go on offense now to start this third quarter. They have a chance to break our tie here as we get a look at the first drive of quarter three. And it's such a tone setter, isn't it? Because both sides trying to seize momentum to begin the half. What do they have dialed up that'll give them an advantage to move the ball downfield? Let's find out what they have dialed up. Now a pass here caught by Hunter Henry. And they work this well upfield across the 45. 
An ideal beginning of the drive there as they'll get 20 and a first down. And when you're playing a quarterback with some experience and some moxie, you enter the danger zone when you decide to blitz him because if he's able to diagnose as he did on that play, he can hurt you downfield. He reads defenses so well, doesn't he? He really does, and the best part about that play for him, I don't think that was his primary target. I don't think so either. I think he had the read, figured out where the blitz was coming from, and went to a secondary target for a really nice game. When we see those runs to the perimeter, when we see those runs to the edge, we think about big breakers, don't we? In this case, it was a modest game, but it does open up possibilities here on second down. Push him back. Push him back. This is Gordon as they go to him again. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. That backs him up one yard and brings up third down. It's real easy to say this running game needs to be better, but the reality is they've been given little time to actually find a place to run the football. It's almost like the defense is there on the handoff. Play fake to Gordon. Now Rivers. He's going to air one out. And that is incomplete. Oh, he had a defender right there with him to force that to the ground. And fourth down now coming up. We saw this a lot in the first half, and it continues. These receivers just not able to get much separation. So that means they have to win the 50-50 balls. They've got to go up with the defender and find a way to start coming down with them. And this time, contact and another incomplete pass. He gets this away. It's a good one. Drawing toward the sidelines. And that'll hit in the end zone. Much too much leg there. That'll be a touchback. So here comes the Raiders offense getting ready for their first possession of the second half. Their defense did its job, yielded no points. Now it's the offense's turn. And how much fun is that when you set things up to start a half and you just tell you guys, hey, if you can shut them down, get it back for our offense, we can roll. And they played out perfectly. Now, can the offense do what they wanted to do at the half, which is find those weaknesses and now attack them and score some points. And break this tie. Just what you want on a first down run. Call it eight yards and it's second and two. First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking. But a guy carrying the ball, he was the finisher. A really nice run. Line of scrimmage, the 28 now as they come up on second and a couple. They'll stay on the ground with Jacobs. And not much, maybe a yard up to the 29. The good run on first down followed up by a not-so-good run on second down. Now let's find out if they're going to stick with the run here on third down. A lot of people would love to see some play action here. I say go with your best running play over your best blocker. Try to run for it with Jacobs. Well, he's taken down, but not before picking up the first thanks to a flashy little spin move. Only three there on the pickup, but that's enough to move the chains. And that's why you spend a first-round draft pick on a running back, not for just the fancy runs, but these dirty, gritty third and ones, third and twos. That's why you draft him. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Now they'll throw with Carr. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. CD, we're already firmly in the month of November, so I want to go ahead and take a look at the AFC playoff picture. Right now, division leaders, New England, Baltimore, Houston, and KC. If it ended today, the wild cards would go to Buffalo and Indianapolis. And you think those are going to be the six? Probably some shuffling along the way. There will be some shuffling along the way, maybe more in seeding than in actual teams, because when you look at who's in the wild card hunt right now, Pittsburgh, Oakland, both four and four. Tennessee and Jacksonville at four and five. The way teams are playing, they may just knock off each other. I think all the teams we listed have a heck of a chance of making it to the playoffs. To throw on third down, Carr. He'll swing this one out to Richard. And yeah, boy, he is very close to a first down, but from where they're spotting that football, he's going to be a foot or so short. Well, it wasn't a big strike, but that completion put them in really great range. What do we have now, fourth and inches? Yeah, it's not more than a half a foot. You know what I would do here. You would always go for it. <laughs> I'm one of those guys. Oh, it is the punt team now as this one's sent away. 
And this will hit just beyond the goal line as it's into the end zone for a touchback. Here's a Los Angeles offense as they get set to take possession. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. On first down, nothing opening up really on the running play. Give him maybe a yard, and it'll be second down. Well, they're hoping that the second half is better for him than the first half. They've got to find a way to get him going. He's a big part of their offense. Here's second and nine, just a yard on that last run. From the gun, Rivers complete. Hunter Henry with the ground. And all the way down to the 36-yard line. A big play there for L.A. 43 yards. We know he's good at catching the football, but then after the catch, he's got escapability. Not only that, he's got some toughness as well because you know he's coached very hard to make sure he battles through, breaks tackles, and then they finish with, but don't fumble the football. So how about that for a chain mover? They're all the way down inside the 40 now for first and 10. Rivers finding his top receiver. That's Allen. A good gain of nine before he's brought down at the 28. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant. A lot of people call it an extension of the running game, and it can be if that pass is completed, because you hit a guy on the run like that, he often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. Now a fake on the give here as they try the run pass option. Got his man, it's Williams. And he'll be a couple yards shy of the red zone here at the 22-yard line. Yeah! Well, that's one of the drawbacks of running the RPO. If those linemen go into run block mode, you can't throw it if they're more than a yard downfield. Following the penalty, here's Gordon. Works his way inside the 30 on a pickup of four. Well, if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. The Chargers on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This time, it's third and three. Rivers. He's got a man. It's Williams. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle comes at the Raiders' 18. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. Rivers now. Five straight completions here in this second half. First and ten. From the red zone now, Rivers. He's got it to Williams. And he will be brought down at about the six-yard line. 12 more yards there and another first down. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it. So it's not that big of a deal to me, and I'm going to keep firing. A field goal could get him the lead, but it might not be enough here as they come up on first and goal. Oh, no, he lost the football. On plays like this where the ball comes free, it's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back because this is, this is a quarterback. The ball gets away from him. Everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense. They're usually looking in the other direction, downfield, or have moved away from him. In this case, though, a teammate is able to come up with the ball. On second and goal, Rivers. Complete. It's Henry. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. Umpire threw the flag, usually always indicates holding, and that's what we've got. And you know, depending on their positioning, where you are on the field, the umpires get different responsibilities, but always, always making sure no one's holding. A crucial penalty there as the hold backs him up for another second and goal. Play fake, Rivers. Finding Green complete. 
And a good gain here of nine from the 19 down to the 10. Able to get nine out of that pitch and catch, but now third and goal. That's a staple of this offense. Drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. Big play coming up. Here's third and ten. I would expect to see some pressure here. The pressure drops off as they'll look to throw. And the throw there going to be incomplete. So here we go. Maybe the biggest kick of the game forthcoming. Badgley's kick is good. And they have taken the lead here in the final two minutes. Big kick right there to give him the lead in the fourth, but there is still time left for a final drive. Did they score too soon? Post game will tell us, right? Depending on what happens on this drive, that's how we'll analyze it. If the other team scores, they scored too soon. If they somehow hold on, they manage the clock exactly right. After the made field goal, Badgley back out there for the kickoff. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. So Carr and the Raiders now. Down 10-7, a minute 54 on the clock. Now they need, at minimum, three points out of this as they come up first and 10. Derek Carr, three fourth-quarter comebacks for the Raiders last year, and they only won four games total, so they've got some experience dealing with tight ones. Now Carr. This complete to Jones. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Solid gain of 18 and a Raider first down. That gets them the first down, but they've still got to move quickly here. The clock still runs. We're at 90 seconds now. On first down, Jacobs. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. Partner, you've got about 20 coaches on your payroll, but there's 60,000 of them in the stands. I don't think any of them like that play. And the later we go, it's starting to sound like 100,000 in here. Carr signaling to his guys, let's go, let's go here. Back to throw, Carr. Throwing for his running back, and he's got him complete. The Raiders going to use one of their timeouts as they'll get it with just a shade under a minute to go in the game. The last catch nearly got him a first, but it did not, and they'll try to convert on third and inches. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. Got what they needed there. The drive continues with a nine-yard pickup. Partner, they're clearly saving those timeouts, but they still have to work with some urgency to put themselves in the right position. Would be a long field goal try from here as they try to hustle to the line. To throw his car. And his throw is going to be incomplete. There have been quite a few plays they might look back on and say, we really have hurt ourselves, and that was another example. And this is late game execution. Everything on the line, so it all has to come together properly. The throw's made. Where's the catch? Got to catch in that spot. Now Carr, after the incomplete pass, brings him up second and ten. Carr to throw. And his throw's going to be incomplete. 
This entire defensive unit, Charles, they've really put in a good shift tonight, so to speak. I like how you phrase that. This has been a good shift. They punched the clock the entire evening. They ought to have shirts that have their names on them in the front to let them know these are blue-collar workers who are getting it done. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has them staring at a third and ten. And he'll only get this to about the 35, well short of the line to gain. Call it a gain of four, and it'll bring up fourth down. They still got two timeouts. Got to start using them, don't they? You absolutely have to. You save them for this situation, but you have to use them. Now the Raiders going to go ahead and use the second of their timeouts as he'll stop it with 11 seconds remaining in the ball game. So a big one coming now for Daniel Carlson. This to potentially send us to overtime. The uh, Chargers going to signal for the first of their timeouts. That'll leave them with two remaining. We'll be back after this. So the field goal unit is on the field as this is a big spot right here. This to potentially send us to overtime. And his kick is absolutely perfect. And they will tie this game here in the final seconds. So a money kick there in the final seconds. And now, barring any hijinks on the kickoff here, partner, I think you and I, we're going to settle in for a little overtime. And I wouldn't have it any other way. This has been a dogfight all through regulation. No reason to think it won't continue in the extra period. All level now at 10 apiece as the kick's away. This is taken at the three. And he'll take this across the 25. A couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. Tie game, and barring something incredible here, we're likely headed to overtime. And just a couple of scenarios here to keep in mind. One, if you want to be really aggressive, you do throw the Hail Mary and see if you can get something downfield. What would you do? What I would do is either hand it off inside or more likely I take a knee and let the clock run out. Because if I'm back there trying to throw and a sack happens, the ball comes free, I can lose the game here. If I get to overtime, I can still win it. Let's see if they are in line with Charles Davis. And here in overtime, if the team that receives the ball scores a touchdown, it's over. If they don't, we can still have some more football. That's exactly right. If they go down and kick a field goal, the other team gets a possession to either match it or score a touchdown to win the ball game. If both teams kick field goals, the next team to score wins. But if the receiving team throws a pick six or fumbles the ball and it gets picked up by the defense and they score, the game is over at that point. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Carr and the Raiders come up first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. They'll begin on the ground with Jacobs. And he's upended after a gain of two out to the 27. Short gain there to start overtime. Almost a tester play, wasn't it? Wanted to see if the guys on defense were going to fit the gaps the correct way because we're in overtime. So it's not just physical tiredness out there, right? Mentally, are you still doing what you're supposed to do? And they were up to the task on that play. And certainly fatigue on both sides of the football. Now left side, a completion to his tight end. That one, a first down pickup of eight. Come on, baby, let's go! And the tight end is certainly a position built to move the chains because they can control space underneath. If they've got good hands, then, of course, they're a dynamic target. But one other thing is they're right in the sight lines of a quarterback on just about every play, and that makes it easier for the quarterback to pick him out and deliver. They'll run on first down. It's Jacobs. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. 
vision is so important for the man in the middle because his ability to, to, to look through all the clutter that's happening in front of him, diagnose a play, and then go make it and finish it, that's when the great ones know that they have the goods. Throwing on second and eight. Carr toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. He was trying to get it to Zay Jones that time, but now it'll be third down. Another nice job there defensively. They've really stymied their passing attempts, and it continues in overtime. And for them to do that, that means they've had to be cohesive on defense. Pressure in the quarterback's face. Good coverage of not just the, the wide receivers, but the tight end, the running backs when they try and slip out, and making sure they're at the point of attack. When the ball's in the air, they get there and help force some of those incompletions. And able to rip off a big chunk of yardage before being dropped inside the 40. 23 yards on the play. Well, that right there is what Jalen Richard can bring to this offense. I mean, last year, yes, he had 55 carries, but they used him more as a receiver. He had 68 catches in 2018, which was tied for the team lead. Really adds a nice element to the backfield for Derek Carr and company. And opening there on that first down run as he gets this forward for about eight or nine. That looks to be eight officially, so second and two. That's a strong pickup right there on first down. And as this drive goes on, we're seeing an offensive line and running game imposing its will. Eight yards the gain on that last run. Here's second and a couple. Once again, it's Jacobs. He's got a first down and much more inside the 20. It's a pickup of 17 and a first down. Well, that last run makes this a 100-yard night. I've loved the way he's hit the holes. He's been quick, he's been decisive, and he's been a whole lot of fun to watch. Now, 57, 57. Here we go, hey, we're good, we're good. Here we go, 85. Hands up. Into the red zone, it's Carr. He'll find his tight end. That's Waller. And he'll be brought down this time at the five-yard line. Ten yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Well, coaches always talk about finding balance on offense. I don't think you can get much more balance than this. Big-time run, big-time pass. A one-two combination. Look pretty good. How about that? Let's see, if they, let's see if they can continue to take that kind of a punch, though. Now a first carry for their fullback. And the stop will come inside the five at the four. A gain of just a yard, but it's a first down. I don't know about you, partner, but on second and inches, a lot of the times I'm leery about the offensive guys thinking about taking a shot downtown. Instead, they just hand it to the big man and let him rumble forward for a first down. Let's get off the field. Working from the gun, it's Carr. And this is incomplete. The intended receiver was Trevor Davis, but it'll be second and goal. Down this close to the goal line, first down. Surprised that wasn't a run? I am, and you know I'm old school. I want to run the ball on first down in this situation because second down, that gives me an option of running play action and maybe throwing it. Line of scrimmage, again the four-yard line. Second and goal. Carr going to give it to Jacobs. And oh, he's going to be brought down by the face mask. Here come the flags. This is going to get him a first down. In overtime, you have to be smarter than that. A personal foul just can't happen. Have to have poise. So now then, the penalty's got him set up with a first and goal. To throw his car. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. Ochenna Nuosu. The blitz works to perfection as he gets in there to dump him for a loss of eight. That I'm struggling to understand a little bit. That close to the goal line, first down, run the football. If you want to throw it, throw some play action on second down. So they get pushed back to the 11, and here's second and goal. Now Carr. And this will be incomplete. I think that's a big time play there because the slant route is really hard to cover because the timing is so quick. But able to see it, diagnose it, and get to the football, that's why he was able to bat it away. Biggest play now in this opening drive of overtime. This is third and goal. From the gun, it's Carr. 
And this will be caught. Touchdown. They needed overtime to get it done, but put this one in the win column. A partner, a great game that we got to see and making it extra special. Not only did I get four quarters with you in this one, I got some overtime, a little whipped cream on top. Look at you, trying to make this whole thing palatable. I just huh? want you to pay for my meal later. Hey, you really just wanted four quarters what you <laughs> wanted, but how much fun was that? We had that type of a game where we got us to overtime, and then we get the dramatic ending to finish things off as well. What a game. So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hardworking men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon Gaughan. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports. The Black Hole Cell.